bargain bag, bargain bag, Tom Q Public's bargain bag, seven discs at a time, it's fun cause I don't know what's inside, here comes Tom Q Public's bargain bag. Greetings one and all and welcome once again to Tom's Hit Parade. My favorite part of the month is here again, Bargain Bag. Yes, that is my monthly hunt for buried audio treasures in the form of two mystery CD grab bags from the late Skips Records and CD World. Yes, although every month I do Bargain Bag, it comes with a little twinge of sadness as well because every time I do it, it's one month closer to the end of the feature. Yes, it's going to last until the end of 2021, but still, knowing that there's only 18 Bargain Bags left to go, uh, it, it's it's kind of sad, although may maybe sometime between now and then I will happen upon a treasure trove. Maybe somebody will be kind enough to bag me up some bargain bag CDs. Who knows what will happen, but anyway. Uh, I have to enjoy it while it lasts. That's the point I'm trying to make. Anyway, uh, yes, I will be opening two of these mystery CD grab bags here on camera, but uh, in between doing those, I will review one CD or possibly more than one, that I have found or that you may be likely to find in the bargain section of a CD retailer near you. But before I get to any of that, I will go over the CDs that were in last month's bargain bag. And before I forget to mention, uh, the CDs that I don't keep, that I am casting off, so to speak, uh, are up for grabs. If you would like to have any of those CDs, if they sound interesting to you, let me know. And if you would like three CDs or fewer and you live in the States, I won't charge you for postage. I won't make you for pay for postage or anything. We can make arrangements in the uh, comment section down below or in a direct message on Twitter. We can talk it over. If you want more than three CDs or if you live outside the States, we might have to make some payment arrangements regarding postage because postage is not cheap, as I'm sure you know. And also, as a final note, uh, which I usually forget to mention, I hang on to these cast-off CDs for about two weeks after the upload date of this video, which you should find right down there. So, let's get going and see what gems or not-so-gems were in last month's uh, bargain bag. First one was uh, very, very contemporary. This was a an 8-track mix CD, uh, remixes all of the same song. Very, very generic. Uh, sounds like cheaply produced uh dance, club, pop kind of stuff, you know. That's what I think of that. And we have uh, the names the same, Joe, Joe, and Joe, who are also known as the Seventh Avenue Band. And as you can tell from the uh, accordion and other instrumentation on the back, it is, uh, there's not a clarinet here. I would assume that there was a clarinet here since it is polka music. Uh, and surprisingly though, this was uh, not the kind of polka music that uh, irritated me so much that it made me want to polka my eyes out. <laughs> Anyway, and then uh, we have Eileen Hemphill Haley. Uh, she is a local artist, uh, singer songwriter, uh, acoustic mostly. Decent, not bad. It just uh, was not my thing. I've only got, I think, three keepers in this bunch. So, yeah, I go basically in order of the least impressive to most impressive, roughly. Start out with the junkers and end up with the keepers, is basically how I do it. That's how I roll, yo. And then we have. I, I was hoping this band would be really good because their name was amazing. Hillbilly Holocaust. How can you not like at least the band name? But yeah, this was um, <clears throat> just kind of basic uh, alt-rock kind of stuff. Just not very rem remarkable, sorry to say. I if the name is just irresistible to you and you want this CD just because they're named Hillbilly Holocaust, as I said, hit me up. And then we have uh, Dutch Henry is the name of this band, and the album is called 1973. Uh, basically country stuff rock kind of stuff, you know, rock-leaning country, I guess you'd say. Yeah, you know, not bad, perfectly competent, just not my thing. And then uh, this other band was, uh, as if you couldn't expect by the name of the album being Cows on Main Street, this is also country-ish kind of stuff, and it's actually just an EP, it's only six tracks. Not bad. And we have a couple of female singer-songwriters again. Christy Hines, and I think I said in the last video that her name sounded familiar, probably because I was thinking of Chrissy Hind, who was a member of The Pretenders. Christy Hines was an S at the end, so yeah, completely different person, but yeah, you know, pop, singer-songwriter, pop, rock, slightly folkish. And same thing with uh, Julia Darling, that's her name here. Uh, Figure Eight is the name of the album. Some of the songs in here... Um, the songs are not explicitly religious, at least I don't think they are, but uh, some of the song titles in here, Overloading God, um, Bulletproof Belief, another song is called Grace, 
So I'm kind of thinking maybe she's quasi-religious, or, or maybe she is religious, but her, mu her music isn't necessarily religious. So, Then we have a couple of uh, grunge titles here. Hell Upside Down is the name of this band, and the album is called The Bovine Ears. A couple of different mentions of cows in album titles. I don't know why. But yeah, punkish grunge kind of stuff. Yeah. The, the CD boom was basically the uh, early 90s, so of course that was when grunge was really popular, so naturally you're probably going to end up with... I, I think I haven't had a bargain bag yet where I haven't had at least one or two grunge CDs. So, And then Brother I is the name of this band, and yes, grunge, again. Unremarkable, but not necessarily bad, just not my thing. And then this next one, this one was kind of interesting. When I put this album on, It's I thought, hmm, this sounds like The Cure. Kind of. It, that's, or at least that's what they remind me of. And it was for good reason that they did. This, uh, the group is called Presence, and the album is called Inside. And when I looked them up online, Presence is a band formed by two of the founding members of The Cure, Lol Tolhurst and Michael Dempsey. So yes, uh, they, they do very much sound like The Cure. It, it would kind of stand to reason because of their, uh, their pedigree, so to speak. For some reason, I have never been able to get into The Cure. I like some of their singles, you know, but, uh, and for some reason, they should be right up my alley. But yeah, for some reason, I just have never really glommed onto them. But if you are fans of The Cure and you are not aware of this, uh, this spin-off group of theirs, and if you want the CD, it's up for grabs. Sometimes I'm kind of upset with myself that I've never gotten into The Cure, and I should. There's, there's no reason why I shouldn't. Because they're kind of new wave-ish, and I grew up in the 80s, so, you know. Uh, this one I actually owned at one time years and years and years ago. It's, the band is called Cool for August. And this was their one and only album, uh, Grand World. And it's, it's kind of alt-rock. It's uh, pretty good and just f kind of subconsciously remembered some of the songs. Uh, or, or at least they conjured up, you know, m images or memories. So yeah, I'm going to hang on to the CD again and uh, give it another chance in my uh, music library. See if it uh, grows on me a little bit more. So, And then yes, uh, this was the first of the three keepers that I'm keeping in this group. Uh, <laughs> this one, The Hippie Nuts. I, I kind of like this. This was kind of right up there with... Um, Hillbilly Holocaust in terms of the my favorite band names from this bargain bag. But yeah, this is um kind of altern alt-ish pop sort of stuff. Not quite it's it's a female vocalist is kind of what um makes this group stand out a little bit. So yeah, some some catchy tunes on here. So yeah, I'm gonna key hang on to this one and see if it grows on me as well. Yeah, good good stuff. And then the uh quite possibly my favorite keeper uh in this group is one that I kind of did not uh really expect anything out of, which, I mean, you kind of don't when you see all these CDs. They kind of blend together after a while. But uh, yeah, the group's name is Beggars, and this is their self-titled album. And it's it's uh, it's pretty cool. They actually, they kind of have a jangly guitar, um, alt-pop sort of sound. And this was uh, early 90s, I would assume. Uh, oh, 95, mid-90s. And they remind me of one of my favorite uh, sort of same kind of, you know, jangle pop-ish sort of groups, the Connells. And this is the kind of packaging, aside from the music now, this is the kind of packaging where I really appreciate the cover art design because look at the track listing on here. Look at the way that they did the track listing. It's just really kind of cool and kind of funky looking. And it's it's albums like these that really make me appreciate the design aspect. It's something that you don't get with digital media, you know, stuff that you listen to on Spotify or Apple Music or whatever. You don't appreciate the, the cover art, uh, namely the back cover art that they, you know, the designers like to have a little fun with it and make the designs kind of funky and stuff. You know, you get to see the front cover art in kind of a smallish version on your screen or whatever. But, uh, yeah. It's just one of those things that the the uh, physical media guy in me is, is nostalgic for, I guess you'd say. Just the uh, the cover art that comes along with uh, physical re releases of albums, whether they're LPs or CDs. It's just fun, you know. Okay, and now that I have yammered on about CDs and cover art and other pointless stuff, well, no, not pointless, really. Uh, it is time to open the first of the two grab bags. Let's slice open the packaging. And I've given you the customary peekaboo. You get to see what's in here before I do. So let's find out what wonderful, amazing treasures are in here. Or not. Let's see. <laughs> Here's another good band name, Greasy Beans. <laughs> what can I say? Real Life Music is the name of the album, so it'll be interesting to see if it's whether it's a live album or not. But hey, Greasy Beans. 
what more needs to be said, right? I, I gotta say, I, I, I love the um, the album titles, the sometimes the song titles. If I stop to read them, read the music. Oh, a Cheryl Crow CD single. Can't cry anymore, as well as a remix of All I Want to Do, U.S. radio version of Strong Enough, and We Do What We Can, which I don't know if that is a an album track or not. Sometimes CD singles have non-album B-sides hiding on them, so I'm going to look through the CDs and see if uh, and any of these tracks, if these tracks are uh, on Cheryl Crow CDs or if they're completely redundant and I can lose this. But, uh, yeah, I like Cheryl Crow. My sister loves Cheryl Crow. And we have... Equinox was the album Humboldt Time. have absolutely no idea what kind of music this is. Uh, there was a New Age uh, music label called Narada, and they had three sub-labels, I guess you'd say, and one of them was Narada Equinox. So that's th that makes me think that this is New Age, a very tenuous uh, theory on that, very tenuous connection. So we'll see what this is, if it's New Age or something else. And then we have... Ten Years of Success from the Naxos label, which is usually classical music. Yeah, this is classical music. So, a classical compilation. Could be interesting to listen to. You know, classical music is classical music. I don't hate it. And we have... Oh, Ruben Blades. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that. Uh, Ruben Blades. He's, uh, he's a, a fairly popular uh, musician. A Latino musician. Uh, poetry. The Greatest Hits. So... Yeah, this will be interesting to uh, listen to. Give Ruben Blades a try. Assuming that's how you pronounce his name. We have... Chasing Jane is the name of this uh, artist, I would assume. Oh, Unraveled is the name of the album. So, yeah. Could be interesting. I have absolutely no idea what kind of music is on here. So, yeah. And then... Gosh, these bag just, bags just go by so quickly because I am down to the... That didn't go so well. The last CD in this bag is Conrad Cummings is the name of the artist. Uh, Photo Op, I guess, is the name of the album. Emergency Music is what's written on the back, so I don't know if that is... Uh... Oh, I guess that's the name of the label. Kind of strange for the name of the label to be so prominent on the back of the thing, but... Uh... Yeah, this, oh, the Cummings Ensemble. So this could be contemporary classical or some kind of instrumental music, possibly. So, as with all these, it will be interesting to see what exactly is on these CDs. Okay, now onto the spotlight section of this month's bargain bag video, and I thought I would switch it up just a little bit here. Um, you might have heard me sort of hint at the beginning of this video that I might be talking about more than my customary one CD that I usually talk about in the midway point of these videos, and yes, I'm going to be talking about two CDs this time. Uh, but they are two in a series. One of them is kind of a sequel to the other one. They're very, very similar. They were released one year apart. And uh, another thing that's kind of uh, peculiar about them is that they're all by one artist, but they are soundtrack CDs technically. So I file them under soundtracks just because that's kind of what they are. Although they could be argued that they could be filed under the artist's name. But anyway, they are both by Vonda Shepard. Uh, a singer-songwriter by the name of bon Vonda Shepard, and they are the first two installments of the soundtrack series from the TV show Ally McBeal. Uh, this is not Vonda Shepard. This is uh, Kalista Flockhart, or Mrs. Harrison Ford, who was the star of Ally McBeal. Ally McBeal was a legal comedy drama series that ran in the late 90s on the Fox network. Uh, I only watched uh, one and a half episodes out of it. It ran for like five or six years, and it was an okay series. It just wasn't quite my thing. But uh, and that's, this is actually Vonda Shepard uh, on the back cover here. This is uh, the artist, and basically the way Vonda Shepard plays into this is that uh, she was the artist in residence at the local bar that the characters on the show would go and hang out in after hours. They were um, characters at a law firm in the big city. I don't know if it was New York or, or wherever, but anyway, yes. Uh, so Vonda Shepard was the artist in residence, as I said, at the local bar, and this these albums are made up of. Uh, studio recordings of the songs that uh, were featured on the show. Yes, they're not like the, the live recordings from the bar scenes. They're just studio recordings of them. And these are both of these CDs are very, very good mixtures of um, cover songs of popular tunes from years past, as well as Vonda Shepard originals. Uh, for instance, the first one, simply titled Songs of Ally McBeal, 
she has uh, four original songs by written by Vonda Shepard on this album, one of which is, of course, the title song from the series, Search in My Soul, which is excellent. Uh, just a great, great upbeat song. Vonda Shepard reminds me a lot of Melissa Etheridge in terms of sound. Uh, Melissa Etheridge is a little bit more of a rough-around-the-edges rock kind of a sound. Vonda Shepard's a little bit more singer-songwriter, a little bit softer. Uh, not not soft soft, but just a little bit softer, just a tiny bit. Uh, but yet, yeah, uh, on this album, Vonda Shepard covers songs like uh, the B.J. Thomas song, Hooked on a Feeling, as well as uh, the Betty Everett classic, It's In His Kiss, the Shoop Shoop song. It's a great song. Cher made a very famous recording of that one. Uh, the Joe Stafford tune, You Belong to Me, which is a gorgeous uh, ballad from the 50s, 60s, as well as Tell Him by The Exciters and End of the World by Skeeter Davis. Uh, so yes, it's a great, great selection of uh, cover tunes, which Vonda Shepard does a fantastic job on. And uh, this album, the first one, actually reached number one in five countries, including Australia and New Zealand, and was a top ten album in nine countries, including number seven in the U.S. and Canada, and number three in the U.K. And it actually went platinum in the US. So it was a very successful album. The show was uh, very, very successful for most of its run. And uh, as we go on to the second volume entitled Heart and Soul, New Songs from Allie McBeal, uh, she basically keeps to the same formula here. Just uh, uh, she has actually five original songs on here on this album as opposed to four, which were on the original, uh, the first release. Uh, but she also does a whole bunch of great, great covers. Uh, this Old Heart of Mine, which was uh, made famous by the Isley Brothers and later on made famous by Rod Stewart as well. And uh, Someday We'll Be Together, which was a Diana Ross and the Supremes classic from the Motown era. And the Jimmy Ruffin classic, What Becomes of the Broken Hearted as well as the Lennon and McCartney song, A World Without Love, the Roy Orbison tune, Crying, and Van Morrison's classic, Vincent, Starry Starry Night. All those songs and more are on here, as well as some great uh, original tunes. And uh, one thing that she does to shake it up on this one is she duets with a couple of stars. She duets with Al Green on To Sir With Love, which is a cover of a classic song. But one of her originals is actually a duet with Emily Sawyers of the Indigo Girls. Uh, that song is called Baby Don't You Break My Heart Slow, which was actually put out as a single to promote this album. And uh, yeah, so yeah, both of these albums are just great. Uh, they did put out a third volume of Ally McBeal songs uh, by Vonda Shepard, as well as a Christmas album of uh, an Ally McBeal Christmas album, so to speak. Uh, but these are the only two that I have uh, thus far anyway. And uh, this album actually also went gold in the States. It didn't quite go platinum, and it hit number 60 on the Billboard 200, so it wasn't quite as successful as the first installment. But uh, still, both of these albums are equally great. They're just fantastic, full of some amazing um, cover tunes as well as uh, original songs by Vonda Shepard. So yeah, my advice is don't overlook, uh, don't pass by the Ally McBeal CDs if you happen to see, especially the first two, when you're flipping through the uh, bargain CD section in the thrift store, the record store, wherever you happen to be. They're both very fun and very entertaining. Excellent, yes. Vonda Shepard is a very talented artist. So anyway, let's uh, get right on with the show here and open up the second of my two mystery CD grab bags. and Peekaboo IC CDs. Trying to orient them so that I can show them to the camera without difficulty. Here we have Wolf Kim with the album Brand New Pants. At least it isn't uh, Greasy Beans with Brand New Pants, right? Um, that they, they kind of look like maybe slightly offbeat, uh, whimsical sort of uh, pop rock artists, so yeah, it'll be interesting to uh, hear that one, as it always is interesting to hear all these. Then we have The Elevator Drops with their album Pop Bus. Never heard of these guys. So, from Time Bomb Recordings. An interesting back cover here as well. So, hmm. You never know what you're going to find in these bargain bags. Then we have Forgotten Soul, S-O-L, as in the sun, with their album Contradiction, a self-released album, 12 tracks. So, yeah. Looks very much like indie rock, possibly. Sweatshop Band, with the on the album Velvet Touch. I really don't have anything to say about any of these uh, albums, because... Uh, 
Yeah, I have never heard of any of them before, so I don't know what to expect out of any of these. We have, then we have this. Uh, the Moz is the name of the artist, I guess. And Mystique and Identity is the name of the album. This definitely looks interesting. My commentary on here is kind of lacking because I can't think of what to say about any of these artists. And here's one kind of uh, appropriate for the time because today is uh, the day after the 4th of July, so an album with the American flag on it. Be Free is, I don't know, I guess that's the name of the artist, and Live Element is the name of the album, or I may have that backwards. Live Element may be the name of the artist. Oh, I see. It's a, it's a maxi single. It is remixes of the same track, so. Yeah, I'll get to hear seven versions of the same song. Who we? And then, that one was a little bit better. The last album in the bag is James, I guess, is that? Oh, their popular album was called Laid. I guess this is the same artist. This album is called Whiplash. I was never big on James, so we'll see what this uh, album's like. So there you have it. That'll do it for Bargain Bag for July of 2020. It is over way too soon. I'm really going to miss Bargain Bag when it's all over. Uh, but anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. If so, hit that like button and share it with your friends. And give me your thoughts, questions, suggestions, or constructive criticisms in the comments section below. Also scroll down to the description for the link to my Twitter and Instagram feeds, and links to my favorite Hello YouTubers who are all worth checking out. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel and browse my past videos, and be sure to ring that notifications bell so you'll be the first to know each time I drop a new video. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time, and remember, life's too short to be a music snob.